Get in there! The Acer Predator X27 and the PG27UQ have finally been given a release date. June, which means it's a little over a month away before you can actually get your hands on one because it's been the most requested thing on this channel ever. Where is the PG27UQ? Where's the X27? I don't know. I've been just doing my best all right to hang on to the information. So let's start with a reminder of why these monitors are so important. Put simply, these are the ultimate gaming screens with 4K resolution, 144Hz refresh rate, HDR technology, and of course, NVIDIA G-Sync. Now I've been following both of these monitors since their initial announcement around about a year and a half, two years ago, so it's been great to see them progress over time. But let's get one thing straight, these are going to be extraordinarily expensive monitors and they still haven't given us the firm pricing, although I expect that to be announced in around about a week or two now. Originally I was told 2000 in all territories, so euros, pounds and dollars. And whether that actually is going to be true, I don't know, I can't confirm that for you. But I'd be very surprised to be honest if that wasn't accurate. This means that they're going to have to be pretty damn special to make them worth the absolutely humongous price tag. And while I will say that there is an inherent flaw here, they are unquestionably the best gaming monitors I've ever used with a massive step up in colour, contrast and fluidity over your standard 4K panel. We had the X27 next to an older Predator monitor running the same game at the same settings and it's laughable just how much better this looks. And yes, I did check the monitor settings and everything seemed to be at its default, so no desaturation or contrast adjustments here. The native refresh rate of 120Hz is way smoother than any 4K monitor I've used before, and while you will of course need one hell of a gaming PC to actually drive this, it makes such a big difference in Destiny 2 and it feels absolutely phenomenal without any perceivable input lag at all. And if this isn't good enough for you, you can even overclock it to 144Hz too. And because both screens also use G-Sync, the adaptive sync technology, there weren't any traces of tearing here either. Now, something that has often come up in the comments section about this monitor is that 27 inches is too small for a 4K gaming monitor. And I do sort of agree with a lot of people that 32 inches would be better. That's probably what I would choose. But you do have to remember that they're going for volume, so I imagine more people probably want a 27 inch monitor, maybe smaller desks or it's just a more friendly size that does more sales, but there will be other monitors in these sort of ranges that have HDR coming soon as well. I don't know any more about them, I'm not hiding this from you, they didn't say, but I'd be very surprised if that didn't include a 32 inch version. Moving swiftly on though to the elephant in the room, let's talk about HDR or high dynamic range. Nvidia are keen to point out that there's such a variance in the screens out there at the moment and they're aiming for class leading performance. As such we have a thousand nits of peak brightness, support for 10 bit colour and then local dimming with a total of 384 zones. The combination of all of this brings an incredible transformation to your games with a more vibrant, saturated and contrasty image and yet it sort of looks more realistic rather than over the top which is so impressive and it's something I didn't really expect. It's almost got to be seen to be believed. There are a couple of drawbacks that you do need to be aware of though and the first one really is that there's not that much support for HDR on the PC at the moment. Obviously you've got things like YouTube, Netflix, but when it comes to games they've actually got to be mastered in HDR and there's not really that many. I think there's between 30 and 40, although obviously that list will keep growing. But then perhaps a bigger issue is with the zone backlighting system as in the wrong scenario you can actually get a bit of haloing around objects. This problem is inevitable with LCD technology but it definitely does put a dent in their claim to be the perfect gaming monitors. To be fair it's not at all noticeable in gameplay but in the menu system where we had a white mouse icon over a dark background it was pretty much as clear as day. Whether this is a real issue though, I won't really be able to say until my extended testing. This is no doubt my final video on these monitors before the full reviews get posted in around about a month's time. I'm so looking forward to actually doing this and telling you whether such an expensive monitor could possibly be worth it. But if you're watching this now and you're wanting to pre-order or it's before the review comes up and you need to know whether it's worth buying, I can't tell you that because I haven't had enough time with it. 
But what I can say is that if you're seriously considering a monitor that is going to cost as much as £2,000, dollars, euros, you're aware that you need such a ridiculous PC to drive it and that there are so few HDR titles that your gameplay is going to be limiting, then I think you've probably already made up your mind and you will be treated to the best looking monitors I've ever seen. But there we go, that has been this video, a quick little roundup of my around about two hour experiences earlier today with the monitors. If you like this video, hit the like button, do get subscribed for the full uh, reviews as soon as they come, which should be very, very soon. But a massive thank you uh, for watching this video. I'll leave links to um, the monitors as soon as they're available in the description as well, along with some of my cheaper favorites, I guess. But I'm rambling, so thank you very much, and I'll see you next time.